All right, let me paint a scenario for you. You want to try your hand at some motion capture? So you hit the interwebs and find... Yeah, not exactly a beginner-friendly price. Luckily, investing your life savings in a onesie isn't required to try your hand at some motion capture. In reality, all you need is a camera, an actor, and of course, AI. You didn't have to That's right, today we're looking at some free video to mocap solutions that utilize AI and are compatible with Blender. After reviewing these tools, we'll show you how to retarget the animations to production create characters and clean up the mocap animations with Blender. By the end, you should be equipped with several tools to help you get well acquainted with motion capture before you go out and make the next Planet of the Apes. The first tool on our list is Rococo Vision. This online tool allows you to upload a video and convert it to a 3D animation with the click of a button. But first, you're gonna need to record a shot of your actor, or yourself, doing a movement. With regards to recording, best practice involves using a wide angle to capture the full body of your subject, making sure your actor stands out from the background, and limiting motion blur if possible. I also like to start my motion capture reference with a T-pose just to give the AI a helpful hand before I do whatever this is. Wow. For Rococo Vision specifically, I got the best results when my feet stayed in the same position for the duration of the shot. After recording your reference, you can simply create a free Rococo Vision account. Next, you can click on Single Camera Upload and select your shot. Trim as necessary and turn it into an animation. <laughs> And there you go, your video has become a 3D animation. Simply click the download button and import the FBX into Blender. The next tool on the docket is called Deep Motion, which works very similar to Rococo. However, I personally found that the free version of Deep Motion can handle some more complex movements. So feel free to jump around in your video and fulfill your childhood dreams of being a stuntman. After recording, much like Rococo, you can upload the video footage. Deep Motion also gives you a few more options to choose from to specify what you want out of your animation. For my animation, however, I just let the settings as default, which seemed to work just fine. Once again, just like Mixamo, you can download your character as an FBX and import it into Blender. Finally, the last tool we're going to look at is called Plask 3D. To get started, you can create a free account and start a new scene. You can then upload your video footage of the movement you would like to capture. However, the unique thing about Plask is that it allows you to upload your own character to apply the animation to, instead of just giving you some Michelin Man ripoff. The only requirement is that the character has to be rigged and it has to be in a T-pose. After uploading your character and plopping it into the scene, you can drag your animation over to the root bone of your character. Let the AI do its thing and boom, another animation. Another one. And as always, export as an FBX and import into Blender. Alright, so if you chose to go with either Deep Motion or Rococo, you will probably need to replace the default character. That being so, feel free to grab yourself a model from RenderCrate.com and pop them into the scene. In order to set the character up for animation transfer, you will have to make sure the rest pose is in a T pose. Because that's how the Rococo and Deep Motion skeletons are set up, and because a resting T pose is the best way to assert dominance. If your model does not already have a T pose as its rest pose, getting it into one is a little bit tricky, so. Hold on to your butt. First things first, get your character in a T pose. Next, select your mesh, duplicate the armature modifier, and hide the duplicate. Now, apply the original armature modifier. Finally, unhide the duplicate, select your rig in pose mode, and apply the pose as rest pose. And now your model should be ready to go for animation retargeting. This process can be notoriously difficult, but thankfully Rococo has decided to spare us the headache by creating their own Blender add-on which will do this for us automatically. The best part is, the modifier, in my experience, works even for non-Rococo rigs, so you can use this process for any of the AI tools used thus far. After downloading the modifier and installing it, you'll find a new tab to the right of the 3D viewport. Open this tab up and go to the retargeting section. Select your original FBX as your source skeleton and your character as your target, and click Build Bone List. This right here is my favorite thing ever. In the history of forever. For each bone in the source skeleton, the modifier does its best to find an equivalent bone in the target skeleton to transfer the animation to. 
Now it doesn't always do this perfectly, so you might have to fill in a few blanks yourself. Once done, simply click retarget animation, and that's about it. And finally, let's address the elephant in the room. AI motion capture, while useful, is no substitute for the real thing, so it might look a little rough around the edges. However, a few cleanups should get you something more usable. One of the first things you may have noticed is some twitching and jittering in your animation, almost like your character just dry scooped five servings of pre-workout before coming into work. One way to fix this is to go to the graph editor and select a bone that is particularly caffeinated. Then select all the keyframes, go to key, and select Gaussian smoothing. And crank it up until the roughness is smoothed out of the animation curve. Now you could do this for every bone that causes you issues, taking care to apply the perfect amount of smoothing and... Or you could just select all the bones and keyframes and turn the smoothing up to 100%. Next, you may have noticed that the animation overall does not line up with your reference as intended. However, given the amount of keyframes, simply editing the base animation directly is a no-go. Uh. The way to get around this is to open up the non-linear animation editor, which allows you to animate in a series of layers. You can then push the base animation into a layer. After that, you can select the new layer that has been created and switch the blending mode to combine. What you've essentially done is created a layer that can change or alter the overall animation of your character without changing the actual base animation itself since it's now preserved in a layer. The edits you make to the new layer will be combined with the original animation to create a new animation that will be applied to your character. So you can now make edits on top of the original animation to make it more accurate or even add to it. And with all that out of the way, we have one more enemy to conquer that has been the bane of VFX artists for a century. Foot slippage. One way to handle this is to edit your character's rig into an IK rig, which will cause a chain of dependency such that the foot bone controls the position and orientation of the other bones in the leg and not the other way around, thus allowing the feet to stay still. Huh? Yeah, if you had no idea what I just said, I've actually already made a tutorial going through the process of creating an IK rig, so I'll just refer you to that if you don't know how to make one. Assuming you've watched that or already know how to do this, you should have now added an IK rig to the legs and thus eliminated the foot slippage. Of course, the mocap animation wasn't originally designed to work with IK, so you will have to use the animation layer method described previously to add to the original animation and get things looking straight again. And with that, you will now have three tools at your disposal, namely Rococo Vision, Deep Motion, and Flash 3D. To dip your toes into the world of motion capture, as well as a few techniques to retarget and clean up motion capture animation. And uh, if anybody figures out how to do this with animals, do send me the reference, because, uh, yeah, those always crack me up. Anyway, Mike.